and this banking crisis is far from over. All the dominoes never fall at once, they fall sequentially, and sometimes there are time gaps between them, and everyone says, oh, all, all good. It's not all good. You have to look behind the curtain of the international monetary system, understand what's actually going on. These failures are symptoms more so than the real problem. Uh, the real problem has to do with tight money. Interest rates are five percent. They're going to be, you know, five and a quarter. But that is the uh, a year or just over a year ago, March 2022. They were zero. Uh, so you go from zero to five and a quarter percent in about one year. That's extraordinary. I mean, people remember Paul Volcker raised interest rates to 20 percent, and he did. But that played out over a couple of years. This is five percent in, in one year, and the Fed's not done. I mean, they're saying. Uh, we're going to think about it. We want to look at more data, but they have not said we're done. This whole pivot narrative has been wrong for a year and it's, it's wrong now. This banking crisis is far from over. What a great news to start our day, eh? Jim Rickard said that the banks will never fail all at once. You have to be cognizant of the situation, like the market condition, public confidence, and of course, the interest rates. One of the easiest indicators of a healthy economy is the interest rates. If the economy is in a red-hot inflation, then the Fed has to raise interest rates in order to cool down spending and encourage the public to save money because they will earn more interest with their bank. The Fed has raised interest rates from half a percent to 5.33 percent in just one year, the fastest and highest in the history of Federal Reserve. But the inflation hasn't come down yet so the Fed has to keep raising the interest rates. This whole pivot narrative has been wrong for over a year, Jim Rickard said. The Fed will never do a pivot. Pivot means stop raising the interest rate and instead start cutting it down. The Fed will keep raising the interest rates until they bring inflation down. A good bank risk manager will think, the Fed is raising the interest rates, it means the bond price is going down, I think I should sell my bond so that all of my bank deposits will not lose any value because of the bond prices going down, but instead these bank managers do the opposite so people will take their money from the bank. Jim Rickard said it will be worse than the 2008 global financial crisis. Let's hear more from Jim. So we have tight money, we have uh, underwater bonds, we have bank management who don't know the first thing about risk management. If you knew anything about risk management, once the Fed said, hey, we're going to we're going to raise rates until we kill inflation. And that is what they said. Jay Powell gave eight speeches between the summer of 2022 and recently. And he said that every single time. Well, if you're a bank risk manager and you hear that, you're like, huh, I got bonds. Interest rates go up, bond prices go down. I understand their unrealized losses unless I sell them if they're in what's called a hold to maturity account, but they're still losses and it still destroys confidence. Now, bank bonds today, you know, you don't have to line up around the corner in the rain, you know, with your hat on waiting for to see the teller. You can just do it with your iPhone uh, and to the tune of you can move a billion dollars with your iPhone if you, you know, with the right accounts and passwords and all that. And so that's what happens. So the bank bank bonds are instant, instantaneous. Um, and uh, and they're far from over. So, yes, yeah, it'll you know kind of in a quiet period, but there'll be more. Uh, and uh, the good uh, analog, uh, Matt, is um, the 2008 financial crisis. Everyone remembers, you know, September 15th, 2008, midnight on a Sunday, Lehman Brothers files for bankruptcy. And that's true. But that started in the spring of 2007. Uh, when HSBC reported disappointing earnings based on mortgage losses and then came to a head in August. Uh, two Bear Stearns hedge funds failed. Uh, there were high high yield mortgage funds uh, at the end of July, August. Uh, the, the Fed raised a discount rate. It took a, a, a full year, another 13 months, to get to Lehman Brothers. And what happened along the way? Bear Stearns in March 2008. Fannie Mae went bankrupt in June 2008. Freddie Mac bankrupt in June 2008. Congress bailed out the system in August 2008, and then Lehman Brothers. So, uh, so that took a year and a half, and there are a lot of crises like that. So we're we're in a we're in falling dominoes. It's not over. It'll get a lot worse, um, and uh, people should prepare for that. But as usual, they don't. They people are very complacent. Wall Street says it's all good, and people believe it, but they shouldn't. Jim Rickards has explained the current predicament that we're in. It's the tight money policy because of the high interest rates. This situation is very similar to what we had back in 2008 when Bear Stearns, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac got bankrupt because the Fed is raising the interest rates. It's similar to what we have now, where the interest rates is very high and the banks are hesitant to lend money to anybody. So, how the situation will end? Spoiler alert, it's far worse than you thought. Well, it either ends when, um, uh, well, it can end two ways. One is something like 2008 but worse, just a generalized global financial crisis where 
Um, everybody's getting the money out of every bank. Are they either buying treasury bills? Uh, you know, treasury bills at a brokerage firm are pretty safe because it's not about the brokerage firm. Brokerage firms fail all the time, but they have to segregate uh, house house fund, proprietary funds, and customer funds. Um, money market funds, same thing. In the sense that in 2008, uh, the the um, the government proved that they're willing to bail out money market funds. I mean, and they did guaranteed every money market fund in the country. So it, uh, the best safe haven is, is gold. I say physical gold. Uh, bullion, coins, or bars, uh, and silver. It's not digital. You can't hack it. You can't steal it, and you can't freeze it. You just put it in a safe place. So uh, eh, Americans don't really get gold. They don't really understand it. So yeah, I think it's just going to be a question of hopping a frog, hopping from lily pad to lily pad, looking for a safe place. The other scenario is that the government just throws in the towel and says, "Okay, all deposits are guaranteed in unlimited amounts." And I knew people who were trying to get eight billion dollars out of Silicon Valley Bank on that. Uh, they sent the wire structures on Thursday night. One guy I talked to said, uh, "Hey Jim, we from Thursday night to Sunday, we didn't know where the money was. Uh, we we sent the wire instructions. We were trying to get it out, uh, but we didn't know what the outcome was going to be, whether it was short or not, wire sent or not. And then Sunday night, the Fed and the FDIC came out and said, "All good. We're going to, you know, business as usual. Open Monday and." It's all good. He said the money went through, but um, that was what you know people were facing, and they'll they'll continue to face. I mean, the the banks you mentioned, I don't know what their deposit flows are right now, but my guess is they're shrinking fast. People are getting their money out, um, and so uh, you might just have to give a generalized blanket deposit insurance protection, uh, and that would stop bank runs in theory. But then. Now you basically nationalize the U.S. banking system. You look like mm-hmm. Argentina. So there are no—I guess the way to put it, Matt—there are no good outcomes. Either there's a catastrophe, worse than 2008, that starts to look like 1931, 32, or the government offers so much protection that they've de facto nationalized the banking system. But the one thing I've noticed is that each crisis gets bigger than the one before, and each bailout is bigger than the one before. And the question I'm asking as an analyst is: Are, are we are, are we at the point where the crises are so big it's bigger than the Fed? In other words, we're not really talking about bailing out a bank or a sector. People lose confidence in the dollar itself, and we do seem to be heading in that direction. Jim Rickards said the crisis will get bigger than the one before. In 1999, Wall Street bailed out the market, and in 2008, the Fed bailed out Wall Street. And now, who will bail out the Fed? Jim proposed the idea of the dollar collapse. People often misunderstand the concept of the end of the dollar as the global reserve currency and as a payment currency. Let's listen to what Jim Rickards has to say. But I find there's a lot of confusion on the topic, and the confusion comes from the fact that people don't. Everyone talks about the end of the dollar, or the, the dollar is going away as a global reserve currency, etc. But people don't distinguish between the role of the dollar as a payment currency. And the role of the dollar as a reserve currency, and those are two very different things. There's some linkages, but a payment currency basically, if I want to buy goods and services from you,、uh, and I tender some form of currency, and you're willing to accept it, and you're confident someone else will accept it from you, that's a good payment currency. It could be dollars, it could be euros, or yuan, or it could be Russian rubles, or Brazilian reais, or, or anything, as long as people are willing to accept it, have confidence in it. A reserve currency is a very different thing. First of all. We don't really have reserve currencies. You know, you go to the People's Bank of China; they don't have hundred-dollar bills stacked up in the basement. What they own are U.S. Treasury securities, which are digital, by the way. The last paper Treasury security was issued, I think, around 1979. So, what they have are, are actually securities. So, when people say reserve currency, what they really mean is securities that hold your reserves, denominated in a currency. So of course, treasury securities are denominated in dollars, but they don't have actual dollars, you know, in a bank account or a physical form. They own securities. Now, as far as the payment currency is concerned, that's relatively easy to displace. This is what all the news is about. So, the BRICS,、uh, you know, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa.、Uh, they're working on a new payment currency, and that we're likely to see a big rollout of that this coming August. Don't know exactly what it'll be. They're working behind the scenes. It could be commodity backed. It could be gold backed. I'm not. Predicting that, but that's certainly one of the possibilities that we need to look at. But there is one thing that could knock the dollar off, which is gold. Gold is just gold. If you have physical gold, bullion, or coins, 
you don't need all that other stuff. You just put it in a safe place and guard it. You know, like Fort Knox or whatever the Russians and Chinese have their equivalents,、um, and just sit on it. It's not digital. You can't hack it. You can't freeze it, etc. So, if someone said, so the idea of the dollar losing ground as a payment currency is completely plausible. It'll happen in stages, and it's happening already. The idea of the dollar losing its role as a reserve currency—it's、um, not going to lose it to another currency, but it could lose it to gold.